Hi, I'm Jackie Bernard, Programs Assistant at Uncle Don's Cabin Historic Site, the home of Josiah Hansen. And I am so excited to share with you a series of videos we filmed called Discovering Dawn. The short videos are a look at the contributions that African Canadians have made to the development of my hometown, Dresden, Ontario. The town was a final destination for hundreds of refugees from American slavery. We had the pleasure of working with local historian, Marie Carter. Marie, this house seems to have a familiar style to it. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear you say that because, you know, you work at Uncle Tom's Cabin and you have Henson House and the Harris House, which are very similar in style to this. And this is, in fact, something that's known as black architectural style that comes from the southern United States to here. So um, when you see a house like this, you have to ask yourself, well, what connection might this possibly have? And here we are on Metcalf Street in Dresden, which is, uh, you know, about a mile away from where the BIA land was. So you wonder what 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 was here? Well, as we were looking at the land records for this house, we realized that this is on property that was originally owned by a really unique group of freemen, even for this area. I've told you about in other segments about freemen coming from Pennsylvania. This particular group of freemen came from Virginia. Now, if you can imagine, in the slave state of Virginia, this family were free from 1670. Can you imagine that? No. No. So they are people who have, at, at times in their history, we see that they've been um, indentured servants, but never chattel, chattel of slaves. And so they had the advantage of having family, of having been able to build up skills, and to bring those here to the community. And the Charity Brothers, James and Cornelius, who, who were the owners of this property, uh, were also tremendous in the amount of properties that they built up when they came here after the 1850 Fugitive Slave Act. Now they originally came to Chatham where they bought many properties and the most famous of which was the property that they built a stone house on that became the office building for the Provincial Freeman newspaper of Mary Ann Chad Carey which I think everybody will be familiar with that name. Uh, then when they came to Dresden um, they opened here, they bought here all of what is known as Block A of Survey 128, which would be this entire area back behind you here, and also all the area along the river on the opposite side of the street. And what they did here was that um, James and Cornelius bought some properties together, some separately. Cornelius had a separate property on the bend of the river that became the uh, a corn mill that he constructed there so there was a corn mill in about 1853 to 1855 and about in that time period um, I don't know how long it operated for sure but it we do have it documented as being there we also have documented and this is really exciting it actually appears in the 1855 provincial freeman talking about the charity brothers having their ship the industry of Detroit dock at the dock across the street Amazing. Yes. And they also owned a crockery store here, plus they owned some commercial buildings on the corner down further. And this is also of interest to you at Uncle Tom's Cabin because in the cemetery at Uncle Tom's Cabin there is a Burkett stone. Yes. And James Burkett, who is buried in the British American Institute Cemetery, is actually the owner of uh, a grocery store on the corner here, which is later taken over by two Burkett sisters. So we have this connection back and forth with the Institute in that way. But the charities themselves, it was kind of a tragic tale because suddenly they lose their fortune. And so they're here for only a very brief period of time, perhaps three, four years at the most. And when they go bankrupt, all these properties are sold off. But interestingly enough, this house was bought by a member of parliament called Archie McKellar. And Archie McKellar's story intersects with that of black history quite a bit, especially here at Dresden, but also at Buxton. Archie McKellar was one of the final trustees of the British American Institute. He's the only white man other than Reverend Thomas Hughes who is named as a trustee in that final group of trustees. And he seems to have taken a real interest in his black constituents. And so it's in a way not surprising to see him buy a building that could quite possibly have been a rooming house that would be an important piece of infrastructure that the black community would have relied on for new arrivals coming in. So that's our best guess of what this property might have been used for. 
It's also curious that McKellar bought it with two other people, and they're both from Detroit, Michigan. We haven't tracked the, the, those, those two individuals yet to know exactly who they are, but I'm sure there's more exciting things to find out about this house and about the whole history of the charities and McKellar here. And I think the house remains as a really kind of exciting reminder that we have these very unique individuals who came and invested in this land, which is really part of the Don Settlement. Very interesting. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you.